of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. You're a spaceman, huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Well, 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 everyone. Uh, this is... Uh... Jonathan from Wrestle Rock Podcast. Uh, you're watching the ECW Special Edition. I am with my partner Benoit, aka Nostradamus Ben. How are you doing, my friend, today? Ah, oh, fine. Man. I'm very proud to be there tonight because yes, uh, we have three special guests, yes, former ECW talents. Yes. Uh, so let me introduce yourself. Uh, we have uh, Jazz. We also have Chris and Rick. And none other than C.W. Anderson. Welcome, <laughs> everyone. How are you doing? We're good, guys. Hope you all are. Yes, Fantastic. it's been great. So thank you so much for being here, honestly. This is an honor and privilege. We know that uh, this is a very big challenge uh, for having all of you uh, all together in the same room. That's the same time. very, very, very awesome. And uh, we go forward with uh, some questions. So uh, uh, go ahead, my friend. Uh, yeah, just uh, to, be, to begin uh, the interview, uh, to start the interview, just a simple question. Uh, how did you get uh, recruited by ECW? Jazz. Oi, Jazz. How did I get to ECW? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, I was training with uh, Rod Price, who had came in as part of the Baldies. Uh, in ECW, I was training underneath him, um, and he told me that <clears throat> that was going on in Lafayette, Louisiana, and he told me that ECW was going to be in town in, in Louisiana for a uh, loop one weekend and for us to go and do a tryout. So I went and did my tryout on the third day, and uh, Polly gave me a call like in about three or four weeks later. Nice. Yes. And Mr. Wright? Uh, mine was a buddy had a tryout and I rode down to the show with him just to say hello because I knew Steve Carino and I knew Simon Diamond. So the night before he and I wrestled public enemy in South Carolina. So we rode down to Georgia. He got the tryout. I just was saying hello. He did his little 10 minute match. Uh, Nova looked at me, asked me, did I have my gear? Did I want to jump in the ring? I was like, sure. Why not? I jumped in for five or six minutes with Simon Diamond. I got out of the ring. I heard somebody tell Fonzie that was sitting in the uh, bleachers or the stands, get the ball guy back in the ring, looked out. It was Paul Heyman. He was sitting with uh, the Dudleys and Taz, and I jumped back in the ring for the next hour, got through with my tryout, walked in the back in the bathroom. As I'm cleaning up, Paul walks in, introduces himself to me. We talked for a few minutes. He asked me where I was at, and I was down at the power plant, not on the contract, and then he asked me um, – to stick around show was getting ready to start. Jim Molyneux comes up to me and gets me, walks me in the back uh, and I walk in the dressing room. He's sitting there, Paul sitting there with Vito LaGrasa. Um, Danny Dorn and Roke Hill introduces me to him, says you're tagging with Vito. You guys are third match. Welcome to ECW. Oh, so oh, that basically got my job just showing up. Yeah. That's a, that's a reason because, um, every, uh, people in the wrestling business know that, this is super important to uh, keep your wrestling gear in your car. Just in case. Yes, uh, every day. And that's uh, a very good, uh, uh, we say, uh, you know, um, say yeah, you always, you always have it in your car. You just never know. And yes. if I didn't have it, who knows where it would have went from there. So I got lucky enough to do that. Yes, I, I, I remember uh, a couple of uh, years ago, um, I'm going to Montreal uh, for watching you know, Ring of Honor um, event, and I, I forgot my uh, my wrestling gear, and um, I I had a, a wrestling match opportunity, and that that was so bad. But anyway, 
<laughs> so this is very important. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you see me, look. If you see me running around and I'm bobbing back and forth, my Rottweiler is fighting with his ball. He wants his ball to play with, so he's knocking me around and stuff. So that's why I'm moving around. He won't leave me the hell alone. So <laughs> that, that's what's going on. Well, um, Jazz, uh, on uh, July uh, 18, 1999, you defeat um, Jason Knight at the ECW Eat Wave pay per view. Well, uh, is, is this your most important match in this uh, promotion, or you have uh, other memories? No, that was pretty much that was the debut of me actually having a match on pay per view. Um, prior to that, I had done a few house shows working with Jason, and um, actually, that's who I did my tryout with was Jason. But yeah, that Heat Wave '99 that was that was the birth of Jazz. Yeah, and uh, between um, uh, you and me, uh, the period of ECW in 1999 was awesome. So that's a very good. Uh, 1998 first, too. Yeah, 1998, and mostly yeah, 1999. Heat Wave, Anarchy Rules. And uh, uh, many other pay per view, but that's a perfect fit for uh, for uh, David with this promotion. So, uh, yeah, uh, thumbs up for uh, for you, honestly. Appreciate uh, it. Yep, that was a birth of jazz. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Wright, uh, we would like to hear you about your first ECW match. You came with uh, Skull Von Crush, aka Big Vito, against Danny Doring and Amish Gold Kill. I don't. I don't remember a lot about it because the nerves was running so high with me. Um, I just know Vito turned on me. That became a staple of us in the beginning was him turning on me and leave me laying for Danny and roadkill to beat me. Uh, I just know I was extremely nervous uh, because hell I'm wrestling in front of ECW crowd, knowing that I'm being watched by the guys in the back because I, you know, I was the guy that just walked in off the street. So, It wasn't a lot. It was just later that I learned that I was getting married to Danny and Roadkill and working with them a lot, which, you know, those guys were fantastic for taking me in and uh, giving me as much as they did in the match and then us becoming close because of their generosity. So I've, I've always been in debt to Nova and Danny and Roadkill for that. Uh, okay. Yeah, and uh, also in the 1999... Uh, There is another uh, pay-per-view. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, Mrs. Jazz. Uh, probably you remember that. Uh, at Honor Rules 1999, you couldn't be a Simon Damon tag team partner because he said, and I quote, I didn't say Simon says, and you're a woman. <laughs> After that, you defeated the new recruit, Tom Marquez. Uh, did you like wrestling with him? Even tell... Uh, this oh, Simon Diamond? Yeah. Yes, I'm in Diamond. Yes. yes, yes. He was, yeah, he was a lot of fun to work with. You know, um, everybody in ECW was was cool to work with. I probably took everyone's finishers. I know I took CW's Spine Buster. I took the Gore. I took, times. <laughs> I, I, took <laughs> I took Balls Mahoney's uh, finisher. So, yeah, uh, working Simon Diamond was, was, was a blast. I learned a lot. Um, and had fun, and and that's what it was about at the end of the day. Everybody getting the opportunity to do what they love and, and having fun while doing it. And uh, at the same night, uh, you uh, defeated uh, Tom Marquez, uh, a rookie. I think it was a rookie. Yeah, yeah, oh, yes. Match, yeah. Uh, was a one minute match. Pro Prodigy, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Also then, known as Prodigy. Prodigy. Yeah. Prodigy. Yeah. Uh, Prodigy. Yeah, of course. Yes, uh, I remember and. That's what ECW was special because there is short match, short vignette, short, short thing, short all uh, mixed with extreme matches, uh, high flying high -flying matches, technical, technical, uh, lucha libre, and that was fantastic. A promotion with uh, different, uh, different styles yeah, of wrestling. Got a little bit of everything to the table. Yep. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's an old dress, if you know what I mean. <laughs> exactly. And, and always action. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Mr. Anderson, at the ECW, you had a, a great feud uh, with uh, Tommy Dreamer. And what was uh, your uh, best match with him? Uh, probably my I Quit. 
that's the one that uh, they still talk about today. It's been, God, what, 21, 22 years it was done, January 7th. 2001 and the only reason i know that is because that was my 30th birthday so i had my quit match on my 30th birthday and getting the approval from tommy with the handshake at the end and then having the crowd chanting cf and dub stand giving me a standing ovation for that match i think that was probably my top match with that now i had fun in most of my matches except when i had to work with mike awesome uh but that's another story but everybody else i got to work with was a lot of fun. I never had really somebody I actually dreaded getting in the ring with everybody from top to bottom that I enjoyed being there, being there with. And you were, you were talking about uh, Mike Awesome. And uh, we remember one of the best for, for, for us, for us. Oh yeah. Of uh, one of the best match I ever seen in my life. It's probably uh, the match against uh, Mazato Tanaka uh, against uh, Mike Awesome. Honestly, um, November to remember '99. Yes, yeah. and uh, that was a amazing, amazing. Yep. And well, Must, uh, Tanaka, Tanaka hated wrestling. Yeah, I worked with Tanaka a lot in Japan, and Tanaka hated working with him because he was a little. Mike was a little dangerous. He was a little stiff on certain things with the, the power bomb over the top. He wasn't too careful with, and Mike also forgot a lot. He didn't remember a lot of his matches. I know when I worked with him a few times, he couldn't remember. I'm thinking you're our heavyweight champ, and here I am six months, eight months at ECW, and I'm having to call the match for you. So that, that was kind of a normal with, with Mike Awesome. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I didn't uh, know that. Oh, yeah. I will tell you, I'll tell you another story about one of the reasons I don't like Mike or didn't like him at the time is because, you know, the number of times he wrestled me at ECW, the number of times we were together on independent shows, uh, I met him one night or met, I saw him in Tokyo in Rapongi, and he was blazed out of his mind. And it's like three o'clock in the morning and he's wearing sunglasses and the guys he's, I'm with Steve Carino, low key spanky. He says, Hey to everybody. He never met spanky before, but knew who he was. And then when he goes to shake my hand, he couldn't remember my name to save my life. Wow. So wow. a little bit of heat right there from that. I've wrestled you a dozen times at ECW and then on the indie circuit and you don't remember who I am. <laughs> 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 then, um, uh, I have a, a questions about uh, but that that don't figure it on the on the list. Uh, what is your opinion uh, when uh, when WWE acquired the uh, ECW promotion? Uh, uh, what is your reaction? We were happy to begin with. I was happy. Because it was bitten brought back and it was told to us that it was going to be ECW all over again, that, that Paul and Tommy had complete control. Mm -hmm. When in fact, it's after the first show, Vince took it over and it turned into a Disney fied version of ECW. <laughs> uh, and it was never, it was not fun after that. It was, I hated going to work there. I hated being there the, the 10, 11 months before I got fired. Actually, today, John Laronitis called me to fire me. I was, I was like, he said, CW, we're going to have to let you go. And I went, sweet. Yeah. Thank you. Is uh, I uh, I repeat uh, pro probably uh, in uh, every podcast WWE is a politic business. Oh yeah, and if you don't talk with the right person, and if you are not with the right person, ah, yeah, that's how it was when Vince. I, I'm sure with Triple H under the, under his helm now, it's going to be a lot better because you know he is actually a wrestler and knows what he's what he's doing. I'm not saying Vince didn't, but. It wasn't it wasn't the best place and circumstances for me when I was there, and it seems to be a running consensus with a lot of people when they're there. Because uh, if I remember, uh, Mr. Wright, uh, you wrestled against Mike Dudley in Velocity. If I remember, in two thousand and three, two thousand and four, wrestled against who? Uh, Spike Dudley at Velocity. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. was for that was before the ECW, and that was just when Spike was the champion, and I was just coming in doing some. Uh, contract but you know some independent job work and i got put with spike but i had nothing that part had nothing to do with ecw my only tv match was with cm punk um when i when it was the ecw version oh uh, yeah wwe ECW. yeah they tried to restart ECW, but uh... 
Yes, and uh, Mrs. Jazz, can you talk about your uh, the Dog Pounds Pro Wrestling Dojo? Uh, also yes. Your, uh, yes, yes. Yes. Promotion with uh, with your husband, uh, Ronnie Mack. Yeah, we have that school, Dog Pound Wrestling Dojo. We've had it since probably uh, since 1997, honestly. Wow. That's yeah, impressive. Yeah, we just we kept getting interrupted because of, you know, the opportunities that we were given in life. And, but every time we had a chance to get it going, we always did. And now we're here in San Antonio, Texas. And uh, yeah, we have the dog pound wrestling dojo. Um, so if anybody interested in wrestling, been a referee, ring announcer, I mean, ring crew, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Come yeah. on down to the pound. Uh, yes. On your wings, um, the former uh, women's uh, the former AEW women's champion uh, Thunder Rosa. That's a big asset for your uh, for wrestling dojo. Uh, well, she's no longer with us. She had to oh. she had to step away because her scheduling got so so full. You know, she's oh, uh, extremely busy. Yes, yeah, But, you know, it started out with me and Rodney, and we rocking and rolling with just me and him again. So, yeah, it's. It is what it is, but yeah, we're still doing our thing. Uh, we also have Dog Pound Championship Wrestling. We have a show um, this week, Thursday night, at the Beethoven's here in San Antonio. Okay. And we also have a show on the 24th in Castroville. Nice. Texas, yes. In Texas. And if we want to uh, to go to your uh, wrestling school, what is the best way to reach you? Um, there's a couple ways. I mean, you can go to my socials. You can reach out. You can go to Dog Pound uh, Wrestling Dojo page, and that's Dog with two Gs, D-O-G-G Wrestling Dojo. You okay. can also go to uh, my Twitter, Phenom underscore Jazz. Okay. Um, you can go to the to the to the uh, wrestling page, Dog Pound Championship Wrestling. So there's many ways to um, to contact us, but. Yeah. But you can't miss it by going to my socials, for sure. Because I, I try to check those pretty uh, frequently. <laughs> And uh, Mr. Anderson, uh, currently uh, you wrestled in uh, AML uh, in the Talk is Cheap event uh, last August 26th. And you were with uh, Brock Henderson and uh, the Extreme Horseman with right. Hunter Henderson. What is your reaction when you learn that we, uh, Harn Anderson will be in your corner. <laughs> uh, that was one of the bucket list things. I had gone down a couple weeks before to uh, train with Brock and his and, and Arn at one of my former students, Lodi. He has a wrestling school in Charlotte, Charlotte called Team Fearless and Move Saber. He, um, he, Brock and his dad work out there during the week when they're not on the road. And so being in the ring with Arn, actually being in the ring with Brock and having Arn in our corner with my fiance in, in the corner as well. That was bucket list material because being an Anderson trying to replicate and give that Anderson name some credit. I mean, if I did it half the justice that Arn did, I'm, I think I'm doing good, but Arn gave me, you know, some advice and he, he loved some of the things I did, some of the promo work I did, but I hope we get to do more with that. Brock, is an amazing young talent. He, his mannerisms, his work is like his dad. Um, with him being so young in the business, he's really advanced to be as young as he has and not being in work as long. But you know, wrestling against two of uh, the Nightmare Factory students in the TSF, those guys, they don't get enough credit, you know, from Cody Rhodes and QT Marshall training them. And then one of my former Extreme Horseman members, John Schuyler, we were against him. But that match, man, I mean, that's on. That's going to be on the High Spots Wrestling Network. But being with Arn, I'm a little kid on the inside when I was standing next to him. Imagine. I'm 12-year-old Chris Wright thinking, holy crap, Arn Anderson is standing next to me. But he on the outside, I'm played it cool. Yeah, he is one of the best. So that, that, that's you got to pounce on him. You got to pounce on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, thank you so much. Uh, Yes. Um, so, uh, as usual, uh, everyone, uh, my partner Benoit, aka Nostradamus Ben, try to predict your future. 
for ending, so go ahead, my friend. <laughs> okay, for all of you, I predict uh, Hilti. Yes, the LT is uh, super important, and with LT we can do everything. Yeah. And you know why? Because Hilti dub, Hilti dub, Hilti dub. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you guys so, from? Canada? Where are you from? Yes, we are uh, located in Quebec City, Canada, okay, at the okay. hours of Montreal. And Quebec South Shore. Yes, uh, that, that's why we have a big accent. Yes, <laughs> comment ça va, comment ça va. Yeah, we are a little bit rusty, but uh, bad. it's always a pleasure uh, uh, for talking with our wrestling stars like you. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, honestly, Appreciate it. A, uh, an honor and privilege. Uh, so be careful. Uh, mostly on a road because we know that you are uh, practically 300 days on a road. So be careful and uh, have a good evening, everyone. All right. Thank you. Take care. Good. 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 Good